Next, with a lot of applause, Mr. Selfaraz Metlo, the Honorary Secretary of the Sindh High Court Bar Association, is speaking on the topic, Importance of Legal Education in Shaping Modern Day Society. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. For the President, Karachi Bar Association, for the Jalwani Sahib members, Sindh Bar Council, Honorable Madam Samia Faiz Durrani, the Lady Vice President, Supreme Court Bar Association, <laughs> Mr. Shahid Shafiq, District Judge, the CEO of Lucky Motors and the President of the Denning Law School and the dear students, Salaam Alaikum. Importance of legal education in the society goes back with the human history. The day before yesterday, I was in Hyderabad and uh, a senior judge, Mr. Justice Zafar Ahmad Rajput, he defined what is the difference between insan and admi. So he said, the living being, dam, when it enters the adam, it becomes admi. But when he learns the social norms, he becomes insan, the humanity, the spirit of humanity. So the importance of legal education goes back since the human came into existence because laws are not necessary for animals, but they are very fundamental for every society of humans. I'm sure these days we even give, make rules for the animals. There are several pets, they follow the disciplines. But generally speaking, the very name human suggests discipline. And this discipline, now it's the depth of the discipline, it is subjective, it, it would vary from person to person. But what we expect from the society generally, that they meet the minimum criteria of social norms, they maintain it. And if they don't, then there are some social resistance. Before the states came into existence, there were excommunications. So if somebody would not follow the family rules or the tribal rules or the clan rules, he would be excommunicated from the tribe, the society, the, the clan. But now that we have the formal states for last about 2000 years or even more than that, and we have written laws. So this is a general discipline by an overlord, which who happened to be previously the man who could master the army, Chengiz Khan, Halaku Khan, uh, whatever kings, all kings were initially feudals. And from feudalism, they turned to be more civilized. They, when they controlled the territory, they, they laid down the rules for their subject. If I may, because many of you are studying the UK law as well, some of those who have studied the property law must have studied the William the Conqueror's invasion of England and how he then let down the laws of the trust and the, the knights, how they used to write the titles and they were handed over to the families and if the knight was killed in the battle then the the trustee, if he turned dishonest, there was nothing in the family to question him. And this is how the writs started to the chancellor. So importance of the law is fundamental because now we are a bigger society. We are bigger than a small family. We are bigger than a clan or a tribe. We are in fact bigger than a nation. To be a nation isolated in its own own uh, you, whatever sphere. Now you are a, in the global village, 
and I'm, I'm sure soon you would be in the galaxy of the globes. This is how the science is advancing and they are looking for the, create, the living creatures on the other planets. If we get to connect to them, and like uh, Faisal Bhai said that uh, the, the technology and the existence, uh, the sustenance is going ahead. And if we reach to another planet where another some sort of creation is living, we will be living in the globes of the society of the globes. And then to interact, we will have some norms, some rules to lay down. Now, bringing back compass to the miniature of our own little, this August gathering, the rules of this as we all are seating, seated discipline, with discipline and we, we follow the instructions. That is the importance of the law. The fundamental questions would be, what is the law? You all have different theories of law, whether it's moral or it's the command of the overlord. To me, close to my heart, this debate has not ended yet, so I cannot give you a conclusive answer that the law is either morality or it's the command of the, the king or the, the parliament. But to the, to the standards of our society and the society who have followed the religions, be it a divine religion of the Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus or any other, the all societies who have followed religion, they tend to be followers of the law command of the morality and their legislatures they make the law which matches the parameters of their morality in terms of their religion because religion is older than the formal legislation there are thousands somebody would ask how old is Gita people might tell you six thousand hundred thousand or there's no definite date when Sri Krishna came on earth so if they ask you how old is the Old Testament, it's approximately over 4,000 years old. So this is, but the, the history of legislation is not that old. The oldest law which was found in the Babylon, Hammurabi code, Hammurabi written on the stone, is something I believe around 3,000 years or a little over 2,500. So the religious laws, the divine laws are older then the human made codified laws. It doesn't mean there were no discipline beyond 25 or 3000 years ago. There was a discipline but it was no formally uh, in, uh, enforced. It was always uh, molded in terms of the will of the ruler. And the larger part of the western world had written laws around a thousand years ago. Ironically, subcontinent didn't. For the first time, we had written laws when British came to subcontinent. Prior to that, it was all about the wish of the king. And this is how Britishers were not so severely resisted when they took over the subcontinent. Because people liked transparency, they liked some set uh, parameters, legal predictability. It used to be a term legal certainty, but now as you would go, some of you would definitely go to become a lawyer and get trained in the England or other countries. It is the predictability. So one can reasonably predict the consequence of their action. That was brought by the written laws. Otherwise, if I could please the king, he could have saved my sin. But if I could not, and in fact I did not, there are many examples of early 20th century for very this region where we are living today, when the rulers used to punish with death someone who matched their ego and save someone for the same sin because he somehow is kinsman to them or somehow related to them. So there was no such reasonably predictable consequence of the action depending on where you come from. 
in our society what we expect from each other is see when my father is a fellow of a uh, in, uh, Canadian Institute of Commonwealth uh, CJJE and when he was asked uh, what is the good law so my father told me if people are good you, law is useless but if people are bad law is again useless so the president of the institute he asked the question oh, what do you mean by that Mr. Metlo my father told me, if people are good, they don't need law. Many of us today, we don't steal, we don't kill someone, not because we fear the penalty or the punishment, because we consider it bad. These are the values that society has inculcated in us. But if people are bad, they wouldn't respect law anyway. This is how we see lawlessness everywhere. So, it is not the mere law that will actually bring the society up, but it is actually the very fact that we embrace the values endorsed by the law. If we treat our children, because to me everything begins from home, and your home is the miniature of the state. So in your home there is one head of the house, be it a mother or a father, or a grandfather or a grandmother, and then there's a hierarchy, elder sister, elder brother, younger brother, younger sister, everyone has a defined role. There are employees also in the home. So if we try to violate the dignity or sanctity of the home, that sanctity is actually the values that your home holds. If we start violating it, then everything goes away. Similarly, if we bring all these values that we observe in our own home, the state will not need so many people to enforce the laws. Because we will willingly be doing things which society is expecting from us. Law is nothing but will of the society. Everybody knows this. And now if that will of the society gets the same importance as the sanctity of our home, if we start cleaning the street the same way we clean our own home, I'm sure we don't, we wouldn't see the littering on the streets. So with these few thoughts, I leave you today and hopefully we'll see each other on a very good positive note some other time. Thank you very much.